Did You Knows? Hi, and welcome to Did You Knows. That jingle gets me every time. Today on Did You Knows, we're going to be talking about the way that nasal obstruction can contribute to temporomandibular joint dysfunction, what's sometimes known as TMJ or TMD. So first of all, TMJ or TMD have become interchangeable diagnoses and will be tossed around basically in the same way. What's going on here is that the jawbone, where it sits up in our temple, is in a joint. So that's where we get the temple mandible joint, tempo, temporomandibular joint, or TMJ. So in the condition TMD, people started realizing that it's more than just a joint problem, and it has to do with all of the things around the joint, as well as stuff inside of the joint that can start to create symptoms, which may include anything related to jaw pain, ear pain, face pain, ringing of the ears, a pulsating sound in your ears. We can also start to get headaches, neck aches, and weird enough, sometimes even dizziness. There are other more rare symptoms of TMJ. These can include things like jaw locking, where you open your mouth and you just simply can't get it to close. Those are a little bit more advanced conditions that indicate that there may be something going on actually inside of the joint as well. So the big question is, well, how does your nasal obstruction or sinus disease contribute to TMJ? So going back to last week's video where we were talking about nasal obstruction and how we compensate for nasal obstruction by changing our posture, by doing things like head forward or turning our head to the side, this has also implications on what we do with our facial muscles that are around the temporomandibular joint. As we breathe in, we have to create a vacuum. So as our chest expands and our diaphragm goes lower, we create a vacuum inside of our throat. It's that vacuum that allows us to pull air through our nose. That same vacuum has the potential to pull our tongue backwards. In order to keep our tongue forward and prevent our tongue from obstructing our airway, we need to do a little bit of muscle activation to pull the tongue forward and keep our teeth together. It's that activation that has to be stronger when we have nasal obstruction that can start to lay the groundwork for chronic inflammation of these muscles. So when we see somebody coming in with newer onset TMJ issues, one of the first things that we do is try to relieve the nasal obstruction. That can be through the mechanisms we've discussed in videos past, anything including management of allergies, including a nasal dilator to open up any nasal vestibular stenosis. And again, as a quick reminder, if you have improvements in your breathing by simply pulling to the side, that tells us that you have nasal vestibular stenosis. In patients who are caught early, it's amazing. We can see that by simply clearing the nasal obstruction and any sinus contribution to the nasal disease, patients can get better fast. So to see if you could be a candidate for fast improvement, give us a call or come on to our website at exhalesinus.com. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and on our YouTube channel. We post videos at least once a week, if not more. You'll be the first to know for each new posting, and I look forward to seeing you again next time on Did You Knows. Did You Knows?